Alright, this is part three of my model building tutorial series, and today I'm going to be talking about paint. Painting is one of, if not the single most important aspect of model building. It's what takes a simple piece of plastic and makes it real, and in some cases can even turn it into a piece of art. Now there are three basic types of paint you're going to be dealing with, acrylics, enamels, and lacquers. In my experience, I found acrylics to be the easiest to work with. They clean up with water, uh, they dry quickly, and are in a lot of ways very forgiving, thus making them ideal for beginners. However, their biggest problem is that they have very weak bonds with their surface. That is, that you can easily scratch the paint off, even once it's dried and additionally they have very long cure times that is the time that it takes for the paint to chemically settle and be essentially inert now uh... there are a couple different forms that acrylics take uh... The first is your basic craft store paint um, you can find these in most places and they are very cheap typically you can get them for under a dollar uh... personally i've not had much luck with them though uh... people in the uh, garage figure kit building side of model building you do use them a lot. Now up from that is your uh, actual hobby acrylics. Uh, Tamiya and uh, Testers both put out a line of acrylic paints. Personally I prefer the Testers as I've found that the end result has been better and I found their color selection to be a little more diverse. The last type of acrylic you might potentially use are the actual artist acrylics. Uh, you can typically get these from any type of art supply store. However, I personally don't use them. Uh, as such, I can't really give you any tips or pointers to use them. Again, garage kit figure builders have used them with great varying degrees of success in my opinion. But, as I said, I don't use them, so I really can't comment. In fact, this tube I actually had to steal out of my sister's paint supplies. Now, step up from acrylics are enamels. Uh, what makes them different from acrylics is that they're not water-based, so you can't simply use water to clean up. You actually have to use something like uh, paint thinner to clean them. Um, additionally, they have a little longer dry time, and additionally, the cure time is about a little less, but overall their bond is much stronger to the surface. Additionally, uh, they self-level, so you can they, that makes them very much ideal for hand painting. Uh, I do know Tamiya makes a line of uh, enamel paints, but where I live, those aren't available, so I typically use uh, model masters or testers. Uh, both, I've had by far the m most experience with as they were actually the paints I started model building with so and if I had to choose a paint for you to work with I'd say go with the enamels as you'll most likely get the most use out of them. Now, the last type of paint you're going to encounter typically and you'll see them in spray can form are lacquers. Now lacquers in my opinion produce the best results uh, I've only recently started using them more so as I finally found a place that offers a good brand uh, in a form other than spray can and that is Mr. Color Line. Uh, I, I have to say this is by far one of the best paints I use. The um, thing about lacquers is that they dry very quickly. Typically you can handle a thing in about 10 minutes or so and Additionally, after that amount of time, they've pretty much cured completely. So you can pretty much layer them very fast and get through a project fairly quickly. Uh, the downside is that I you you got to use their brand of thinner, in my, which does make it a little harder to work with. Um, additionally, they are I found them to be pretty bad at um, actual hand brushing. So one of those things to look for. But in general, if you can get the lacquer Mr. Color paints, get them. They're worth the money. Now, another type of lacquer 
are essentially more of a specialized lacquer are the all clad lacquers. These are use use them to create metallic finishes and again they just produce some truly realistic results. Now another sort of paint but not quite there are um, Pearl X pigments. Uh, you can mix these in with uh, paint you're using to add sort of more specialized effects or you can add them to change how the overall finish of the kit will look and they can do some really great results. Now, when you're going to paint, you're going to need some way to essentially transfer the paint from the bottle it's in to however you're going to potentially mix it. Now, the easiest way to do that is with an eyedropper. Uh, I get these from a local craft store. You can generally just get away with buying one pack of them and you'll be good. Now, you're also probably going to need some type of container to hold your paint when you're mixing or storing and simple jar will do. Additionally, you'll sometimes find that it's a little hard to get the jars open. And for that, you'll need something like this, one of these can opener type things. Um, now, another thing you're encountering when you're painting is you're probably going to need some way to hold the part other than your hand. And for that, I make these. Uh, essentially, a pair of alligator clips glued onto a spare piece of uh, model sprue tree. It's cheap and it'll last you a long time. Uh, additionally, once you've done a lot of painting, you're going to need some way to protect that paint when you're layering or doing special paint jobs or in different parts. And for that, you need masking tape, specifically painter's tape. In general, you do not want to use just your regular scotch tape. The scotch tape is plain and simply just too strong, and when you go and remove the masking, it's going to tear off the underlying paint. Now, additionally, you, there are liquid forms of masking. However, I've not had much experience, or both good and ba or bad with them. So, uh, again, that's something to potentially look into. Now, by far one of the most important investments you can make in model building is getting one of these, an airbrush. Uh, this is a double action, which means you can, as you pull back, this will just the flow of the paint, and pushing down will actually start the airflow. Uh, definitely, if you are serious about building models, get one of these. They it is by far your most important investment. Granted, however, they are expensive. Uh, this one I actually got at a uh, convention on sale for about 60 bucks. Um, in order to use an airbrush, however, you're going to need some sort of air supply, either in the form of a can of compressed air or at an actual compressor. Um, with compressors, they vary in range in price and size. Typically, your big industrial size uh, compressors are cheaper, but they're very noisy. Whereas your small hobby compressors are more expensive, but a lot quieter. So that's something to look at when you're buying. Um, now. When you're painting, eventually you're going to probably encounter some sort of situation where you screw up. And for that, you have Windex. Uh, this will essentially strip just about any type of paint, depending on how long it's had a chance to cure. Typically, if you screw up, you want to get it into the Windex as quick as possible, so as you can get the uh, offending paint off right away. And that's, I guess, it for now. Um, come back again for next video. I'll be talking about some places where you can actually buy uh, model kits and supplies online.